Good morning, everyone. Mary came to me about three days ago, and she said, Nelly, you're going to have to open the festival. I mean, no pressure. Open the festival, like the kick festival. 13 years of existence. Imagine that. Speakers, come here, because I need you. Everyone. So Mawadaki came live from Tokyo. You arrived yesterday. You had a good flight. You good flight. That's your Buddhist. That's it! Da. Okay, movement, little twist on the side. Ah, sorry. Little twist. Uh, ale, ale, twist, twist. So, me, me, I want thank you. Yes! Well done! I run a studio you know, in London. And what do we do in this studio? We aim to manufacture what we call the impossible. We design experiences, so we make dark energy in people's sink, we make Vulcan in your living room, we give you the full lift of experience of a Soyuz rocket while it's Friday and you want to experience stage one, two, and three of a Soyuz rocket. We give you a sonic boom experience inside your bathtub, and all of that while you experience the different sources of energy of our world. So this is shiny gold, and actually it's quite typical of the way that we do things, which is basically I will design a sort of a playground for members of the public to kind of like experience different elements or different scale of energy, for example. In this context, it was about, you know, energies from Marie Curie finding the uranium all the way to the sun, moving on into bacteria, you know, because there is also energy in your bacteria, you know, in your intestines, for example, so you have a giant intestine in there. You also meet with deep sea creature. And really, the idea of our installation is to kind of like build upon this idea of nonlinear education. You know, when you're at school, usually they teach you that there is biology there, there is physics there, and then there is literature here. And what we try to do is to really bring it all under the same roof where suddenly, as a member of the public, you kind of experience all of this as part of one ecosystem, which kind of makes sense, right? Because there is a direct relationship between the sun and your gut, and of course, the uranium that you will find inside the grounds uh, that Marie Curie eventually found. Then the other side of the story is we also always work in collaboration with scientists, with sociologists, with architects. So it's a really pluridisciplinary team at the core of everything we do. And, and the hope with that is, of course, to always support plurality. So all of these stages and all of these sets, in a way, they always also welcome local community around uh, the event. So for example, in this context, it was uh, an event that was taking place in Paris in a place called Gaté Lyrique. And what was interesting was to work with the voguing community and specifically the Vogue balls around the space, so to get them also to make their own version of shiny gold. So it's always like, you know, you build the set, you build the storyline, you kind of like have all of the elements of the playground, but you also collaborate with either a youth organization or the local partner so that they then make their own story out of the, of the set. You know, I will train people like FEMA, which is like the equivalent, I don't know what the equivalent is in Belgium, but that's just to give you an idea. So we will train them, we'll design them extreme scenarios, and then off they go, they have like to just survive, basically, of the scenarios. Or I will take students to Chernobyl, uh, places where they can experience, you know, when disaster happen or when technology goes wrong. Or I will design expeditions so we can look for, you know, extreme form of life on this planet that we could send in outer space. So that's kind of like the way that things goes. And then I work in the space industry. So I work at the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence Institute. I don't know if any of you have heard about it. Have you heard about the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence Institute? We are indeed looking for aliens, people, yes. We are looking for intelligence form of alien. And actually, what I found fascinating is that if you are to work at the SETI Institute, you need to, in some ways, respond to one element of that equation. This is the Drake equation, and its N is there to tell you how many potentially intelligent civilizations might be out there. So that kind of like got me to think about what is above and what is below. And to always design experiences that are going to try and connect this to scale. Because very often, whenever we experience any form of storytelling, it's all very linear. It's all very much like, you know, kind of limited to a time and a space. There is actually nothing like the way that the universe is being built. So for the past like two years, I've been trying to like teeter on this idea of alien aesthetics. What does that look like? Because of course, when you think about space, 
the actual aesthetics that comes with space is actually defined by people like Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, right? So how can we start reinventing these aesthetics that are actually maybe more in line with some of our culture, some of our heritage? I thought I'm going to do something special today. I'm going to share with you something that I have not shared with anyone. I just finished a new movie, which is called Doppelgangers. And uh, as the title sounds, it's basically a collaboration between my doppelgangers and I. For me, it started back in 2017, where I met these two uh, persons here. Uh, and they look like me. We look like each other. And actually, what we started to do, and we've been doing since 2017, I'm going to share that with you. This has already what we've been doing for since 2017 is we've been going around in the world and they will give speech on my behalf. <laughs> so people will think that this is my doppelganger here, yeah? you know, and then nobody so actually I realized. Am Nili ben Ayun, as you just heard, I am so happy to be with here tonight oh. with you all in Berlin. Perfect French, what English as well. Yesterday in France, we had the election. So then she has a sister, and then the Some sister will turn up, and then off you go. So you get the you sense so of you it. Can also donate to now, it's been interesting because actually, what he allowed us to do, so I'm going to go back to that, what he allowed me to do since 2017 is actually to be in different places at the same time. Right? And as it happens, I don't know if you know, but uh, Noemi Klein, have you heard about Noemi Klein? She wrote this book called No Logo. You know, she's kind of like a political terrorist. She just released a book called Doppelganger, which if you are interested in technology, it's actually quite interesting because what happens is Noemi Klein, like most of us during the COVID pandemic, she kind of disappeared into an island somewhere in Canada. And then as it happens, she's a really famous, you know, political terrorist. She's obviously super critical of any form of totalitarianism or any form of Uber marketing. And then what happened to her, unfortunately, is at the same time as she was kind of like going low-key inside her island during COVID, someone called Naomi Wolf, who is the opposite thinker of her, but that's Naomi Wolf that you can see on the screen, so it's Naomi Klein, Naomi Wolf. Uh, and Naomi Wolf is actually someone that is like a conspiracy theorist fan, she's a right-wing, um, you know, so she's got the opposite view completely of Naomi Klein started to become super famous. And she's also, uh, you know, supporter of Trump, supporter of Canon, you know, like the wars that you can imagine. And so, you know, Naomi started to write about this and this idea that, you know, with digital technology now, uh, more and more so you're going to be confronted with this kind of like, you know, unknown, like these people that never, that basically stole your identity in some sense. And that is supported by the algorithm, because the more she was trying to say to people that will start to mention her on Twitter or on Instagram and so forth, that she wasn't the person coming up with such horrible and horrific ideas like Naomi Wolf, the more the algorithm will push her name instead of the one of Naomi Wolf. So there is something really interesting there about our time and about the way that actually, you know, uh, I would say some of this technology kind of like supports this multifaceted or this kind of completely schizophrenic uh, way of existence. Now, in my context, what I was looking into into this new movie, so it's a new movie that is coming out next year. It's a feature documentary. And so it's a collaboration between my doppelganger and I from Algeria and Armenia. So I'm half Algerian, half Armenian, but I'm raised in France. And I only very recently went to Algeria and to Armenia. So I have this kind of fantasy about this life, right? Because I'm part of the diaspora, effectively, because I grew up in France. So my knowledge about you know, Armenia and Algeria is actually quite limited. So it was one way of reconnecting with you know, both of this shared history, because of course I heard it from my parents. I heard what they went through. But yet, I never really got to experience it. And so I think what is so fascinating about doppelgangers is they usually, in popular culture, have this kind of notion of like the good, the bad, you know, the kind of the idealized uh, self, in a sense. So this is both of us. And what we started to do is we actually put together an experiment. So it's an actual scientific experiment where we actually put together these three humans. I'm going to read it for you so, you know, hopefully it makes sense. So this experiment brings together three different humans with different geographical backgrounds, like I mentioned, Algeria, France, and Armenia. The three subjects are look-alike, also known as doppelgangers, currently realizing a creative feature lens documentary on their collaboration. Meanwhile, their family really share collective traumatic history. So 
you know, I grew up on the history of the Armenian genocide, which is something that, you know, your grandparents and your great grandparents share with you because a big part of this history has been trying to be eradicated. So it's really important to the diaspora to share this history with uh, the kids and the grandkids and so forth. And the history of torture that comes with the, uh, well, with the Algerian, you know, colonization and what happened during uh, the war for independence. And so we only re recently met. And so as this is happening, we also have the fact that most recently in neuroscience, what we found is actually collective trauma uh, and its impact on our gene, in a way, epigenetics, sorry for the lingo there, but that's the, the genes, uh, are basically proven that uh, you mental and psychological impact happens through generation. So that means that if you're from a diaspora that has experienced some form of collective trauma, it's more likely that you're gonna be thinking about the future differently. Do you follow me? So the film is really trying to say and to think about if we are three people, yet we didn't meet, but we come from different backgrounds, but we share a common history, traumatic common history, then how do we think differently and are we then the most equipped people to actually think about the future of humanity in space? Because we, by definition, are not gonna try and repeat history because we have been impacted by it. We went to train as astronauts, we were left on our own device for two weeks inside a cave in Spain, somewhere like deep down for two kilometers underground. And we had scientists testing us, getting our DNA, figuring out what was the impact of actually being in these spaces. And we were tasked with trying to come up with new vision for the future of humanity in space. What is your vision for the future of humanity in space? Think of the moon as a place where madness is permitted. Parallel versions of myself go this way, and this way, and this way. That's crazy. That's bizarre. But that's the way the universe is. And I think the doppelganger, like in popular culture, like it can have like the light and it can have the dark. Like the doppelganger can be your shadow, that the shadow self and the repressed fear, the repressed trauma. Is that control? Do you copy? I have fell down. Do you copy? I fell down. I took a cable for a rope. Please abort mission. It is not safe right now. We lost them. Mission control from Astro 3. I cannot see anything. I don't know what's going on, but I'm not feeling really great. I don't feel confident that I can exist in this condition. I'm ruling her in the cup. <laughs> Is that enough, Nelly? Yes, yes, I think. Yeah. I think, I think we got the point. some core ideas, right? So radical imagination, which was the topic of my talk. What is radical imagination? So radical imagination is really the ability to imagine the world, life and social institution, not as they are, but as they might otherwise be. It's the courage and the intelligence to recognize that the world can and should be changed. The radical imagination is not just about dreaming of different future. It's about bringing those possibilities back from the future to work on the present to inspire action and new form of solidarity today. And we all know how much we need solidarity at this point in time in history. So, you know, if any of you are able to actually develop collective experience that can allow to draw from the past and acknowledge the past, but also build social movements and support plurality uh, and also 
allocate space and time for these events and these experiences to be in permanent transformation, then in a nutshell, you have something that is called uh, radical imagination. And so that's what we teach at the University of the Underground since 2017, where we support free, pluralistic, and transnational education under the uh, umbrella of someone called Anna Arendt, who was a political theorist that died in 1975. If you don't know her, she kind of like predicted the end of humanity uh, with the development of technologies such as the atomic bomb and Sputnik at the University of the Underground, teaching students how to develop federation of care. This idea that, in a way, there is governments, there is nation states, and there is a way that we have organized our governments and our territories and our little borders. And then there is something that exists beyond that. And if you go back to the philosophy of someone like Anna Arendt, but there is many political theories that can talk about this, uh, then you, know, you start thinking in terms of federation, this idea of having things that exist beyond borders, so like actually looking at Antoine, I don't know where Antoine is, but his presentation on interspecies communication is super interesting, because perhaps when we think about the future, we should start looking into ways that bacteria communicate, ways that fungi are organized, and how that might inform new political you know, landscape. Uh, so that's it, and I'm going to leave you with this amazing quote that she actually said, which is to act is to begin something new into the world, that is action. Sending love to everyone. Thank you so much for your warm welcome. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>